Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Tidicom video, we have a myriad of specifications for you on future graphics cards, the R9 390X, as well as the GTX 980 Ti. This is also an article if you want to check it out, which is linked naturally in the video's description. But without further ado, because it's pretty late in the United Kingdom, let's get on with it. So, we're going to start out with the R9 first, simply because, well... AMD are first in the alphabet, no other real reason. So the good news is there's further information which indicates that it does have 4096 shady units. Furthermore, it's going to have full DirectX 12 tier 3 implementation and is optimized for 4K gaming. Okay, great. But the real thing here is that it's going to be designed for full VR immersion. Probably part of AMD's liquid VR thing. Now, the specification that's new, and the one that excites me, is the fact that it actually features up to 8 gigabytes of HBM. We all know that HBM right now, you know, it's got, um, it's on 4096-bit bus, and it's running at 1.25 uh, gigahertz, and so on and so forth. And we know that 4 gigs have been banded about for a long, long, long time, but apparently there's also going to be an 8 gigabyte model as well. That's really exciting, at least in my opinion. And if you think about it, with 4K games, yeah, it makes sense. The next generation of GPUs, really a lot of VRAM is going to be required. And while now we can get away with like, you know, two, three even gigs of RAM, you know, depending on the resolution, but really four gigs is kind of what you want. To be totally honest, and the next generation of GPUs, four gigs was a concern with HBM. I wouldn't be surprised if it would be okay for like a year, especially if you're not super worried or you're going to crossfire. Remember, from what we're hearing, because the GPU data is not mirrored over DirectX 12, theoretically, although they haven't exactly given a number, but theoretically, you might have like seven gigabytes of unique data, which would be more than sufficient. But anyway, the fact of the matter is 8 gigs, which is great. Um, now, the 980 Ti stuff is the more interesting section. Uh, well, at least the more controversial section. So, the 980 Ti, if you remember back to the Kepler days, you'll know that effectively the Titan and the 780 Ti were the same apart from floating point precision as well as VRAM. But... VRAM's not a big deal because they actually did release a 6 gigabyte model. In other words, the Titan and the 780 actually had the same in the end. But the precision was the, the main factor in the compute performance, basically. However, uh, the GM200 is, of course, the core for both GPUs. Now, the Titan X is going to have 3072. Uh, we've had a lot of rumours concerning that, and it's going to have 333, 334 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. Um, and those that bandwidth is going to be the same on the GTX 980 Ti. The difference is the Ti features 2,816 shaders to maybe even slightly lower, maybe even one unit uh, disabled, one more unit disabled, bringing it to only 2,688 uh, shaders, which is quite a significant difference between that and the Titan X. So what the heck does that mean? Well, it means that NVIDIA are likely going with the speed, speed binning approach. In other words, if they find that one of the, the SMXs is disabled, then what they can do, uh, well, damage driver during manufacturing, they can basically say, hey, this isn't good enough to be a Titan X, but it's good enough to be a 980 Ti. And then all they have to do is just disable the, you know, compute performance, the additional compute performance of the of the Titan, and then they're good to go. So what they're probably doing right now is they're probably figuring out the yields of the Titan, or maybe there's actually a different reason. It's possible their reasoning is so that they don't cannibalize the Titan X sales, as there's a rather large price difference between the two GPUs. Once again, this isn't confirmed, but the lower end of the 980 Ti, it's 649. The lower end of the Titan is 1,000, whereas the high end of the Ti, $700, is 
whereas the high end of the Titan X is $1,350. That's a lot of difference, as you can imagine. Now, just for your com price comparison guide here, 548 four, let me start again with English, $549 will buy you the 390X, supposedly, once again, if it's accurate. Um, in terms of T-flop compute, uh, compute performance, the 390X wins. It gets 8.2 T-flops of compute performance rather than, let's say, 6.6 .6 to 6.9, depending on the GPU from NVIDIA. Yeah, so how accurate this information is, shrug of shoulders, but if it's fairly accurate, it does bring up some rather interesting questions, at least in my mind. Um, and from a pure gaming standpoint, assuming the GPU is pretty efficient and there's no problems with yields, there's no problems with heat, and it doesn't look like there's going to be for the R9-390X because there are going to be water cooling models on launch, supposedly. And assuming there's no manufacturing problems, assuming it's not a paper launch, just looking at the raw specifications, I would be pretty surprised if the Titan X can win uh, against the 390X. But obviously, at the end of the day, I don't have both GPUs to test. So it's just kind of a shrug. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to see. But I, for one, am really looking forward to these two cards, or these three cards, to be totally honest. And I think it's really good for the PC gaming industry. Anyway, with that said, uh, as I said, if you do want more information, you can check out the article, which is, once again, le linked. I don't know what the hell, I think it's just because it's late, so yeah, my brain is not the function at the moment with the English, which is really annoying. But anyway, it's because I've been benchmarking Bloody Devil May Cry all day. It's been one of those days. But um, yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.